Hey everybody, Steve and Jim here. Heading home from our weekly trip to Walmart. And some of you have asked about finances. You've asked who pays the bills and who takes care of the finances at our house. So we thought we would answer that question on the way home today. And I think instead of just pointing the camera at myself, like I usually do, I thought you might like to see what the drive looks like for a change instead of just looking at our faces. So Jim, who pays the bills in our family? Well, basically, we pay our own bills directly, but anything that's household or joint, like utilities and that stuff, I pay, and then you reimburse me your half of it. Yeah, so when we first got together 32 years ago, we were trying to figure out what would be the best way to do our finances. I know a lot of couples, traditional married couples, will just combine their income and have one like checking account and one savings account and pay all the bills out of that. But that didn't seem to make much sense. This is the airport here. Right, so Walmart, where we shop, is right across the street from the airport. For any of, any of you who are kind of curious, haven't been here before. And there's a museum here. Did we already pass the... No, it's coming out. This is the Air Mu Palm Springs Air Museum. So anyway, when we first met back in the early 90s, I mean, until 2007, when the domestic partnerships came in place, we weren't any sort of legal couple, so we never actually mixed our finances. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about why we didn't do it, but we just kept our finances separate, and it worked out just fine. So what? So since Jim, Jim went to school to be an accountant, he was an accountant, he got his degree in accounting, and then became a CPA, he's always been the numbers guy, and that was obvious right from the beginning. I, definitely the opposite of a numbers guy so we just figured that he would just go ahead and pay all the bills every every month and then he puts together like a little spreadsheet of how much everything was and he divides it in half and I pay 50% he pays 50% almost we actually there are a couple of things that aren't 50 50 but for most of the the time we've been together, everything has been 50-50, our mortgage, our everything. We, we buy our, our cars separately, although the last car we bought, we decided to buy together. But that's a, a topic for a, another video. But for the most part, everything we, we bought, we buy is separate, other than the house that we bought together. And it's in both of our names, and we always pay 50-50 on the mortgage. And Jim just sends me at the end of the month, he emails me the monthly statement of all of our bills that we, everything we paid for the month, and that he paid the, the entire amount, and then I just reimburse him 50%, and I write him a check. It's hard to believe that we still write checks, but Jim is, even though, and this is also another video, Jim is like super techy. He's like Mr. Tech. He, if there's a computer issue or problem, he fixes it. He's really good at that. He's always been excellent at that. But when it comes to checks, he still likes to write checks. I would rather just send him the money, you know, through Zelle or something, but he doesn't like I to do like that. I like to write checks, but... I mean, the one re good reason for you is because I've got to go to the bank anyway when I have to get money out of the ATM. So once a month when you give me the reimbursement check, I go deposit that and then I pull out the cash that I need. Yeah, but so do, you I mean, need, do you need to go to the bank every week? I mean, or once a month? I yeah, only go to the I bank now once, once, once. I don't know what you use cash for because I, I, I don't use, use cash, cash for anything. for when I go to breakfast. Oh, but you could use your credit card I, and get I'm points. Not gonna, to put that kind of stuff on my credit card. You get points I, probably for it, right? You need to make, make some money from it. I just, I'd rather pay cash for that. Yeah, so Jim is definitely very old school when it comes to those kind of things. I still write down my one check a month to give to Jim and then he cashes it and and so a couple of and things. You still can't balance your checking account. Yeah, I swear. I, even, <laughs> I write one check, and I have a couple of bills, and I still cannot balance my check. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I would say fifty percent of the time I can balance my check. <laughs> I don't know. It's always off. It's just bizarre. But uh, luckily, Jim is there to, to the rescue to kind of balance it every uh, every well, month. When was it when we first met that you had like? 
truly balanced your checkbook in like three years or something? Well, yeah, I think you found a thousand dollars that was missing. I didn't even know. I, I thought I was, I thought I had like a thousand less on my checking, but I had a thousand more than I even knew. And so, thank goodness you came along, or I'd still be minus a thousand dollars in my checking account. So, yeah, I'm definitely not the numbers guy. So, the couple of things that we don't split 50 50 one is the our house phone i gave up house a house phone i didn't i haven't used a house phone in a decade and i didn't want a house phone i didn't want to pay for a house phone and so but jim really really wants to keep the house phone and i i get it i guess you know for emergencies or something so he just goes ahead and pays for the house phone because he really wants it and i don't and the other thing is our cable bill he wanted the most expensive pa package because it also has his sports, like your footy from Australia and stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple extra channels that are on there that I pay for. So, I mean, that is more like a 75-25 split, but then you pay for some of the, you know, it kind of somewhat evens out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be well, because yeah, because I pay for all the streaming services. So, I pay for Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and HBO. Now, we don't have all of those all the time. Like, right now we don't have HBO, but I think we may get rid of Hulu, and then we'll switch over to HBO for six months or a year, and then switch back. Because a lot of them, they just don't have enough to to watch, you know, for the entire year to, to make it worthwhile to subscribe for the whole year. But, yeah, so I pay for those. So those are about the only things where we don't just do 50-50. And, you know, it works out. How about you guys in relationships? unconventional relationships how do you handle your finances and and the bills do you do it like we do i know a couple of our gay couple of friends they actually have like they'll have their own individual accounts and then they'll have one joint account where they can write a a check out of the joint account and i guess we could have done it that way but that just seemed like it wasn't necessary i mean why have an extra third account when you know, I could just write one check a month. Well, yeah, because we'd have to either put money in a, an account like that, each of us anyway, and then write the bills out of there. So, I mean, it's adding one extra step to it. Yeah, yeah, it just didn't seem necessary, so we never did that. So, this has worked fine for us for 32 years, and... And plus, I mean, there's quite a few bills. I mean, some of the stuff is like on auto pay through the checking account, but there's some bills that I pay on the credit card that I do get points or, you know, cash back for, like the cable the cell phones I mean that stuff I put on the credit card each month so a lot everything isn't necessarily truly by check yeah well that's good well I think you were saying that our pool our pool guy or the pool company they uh, they're like the only place right now that actually requires you to write a check so they're still back in the old days as far as yeah because I mean literally that's the only check I write each month right now so I write one check to you and you write one check to the pool company <laughs> and uh, yeah it's uh, it's a kind of a slower smaller world here in a lot of ways here in the desert my doctors some of my doctors they don't do email they don't they're not really attached to the internet it's it makes it difficult to find out you know what your reports are and things or to, to store anything online some of them have started to to modernize which is nice but yeah I, mean, I guess that's part of the thing about living in a smaller town like this is people are a little bit more old school about the way they do things and that that's fine with us you know we're, we're pretty old school we like old school we, we are old school. <laughs> Jim also takes care of all the tax returns, and so that's really helpful. And for me, since I've been self-employed for, you know, a decade or two, and even now with my YouTube, what I, whatever I make from YouTube, I have to pay taxes on that. And I'll do a video about that as well sometime in the near future for those of you who are interested, you know, on how much I make from YouTube. And I was thinking it really is kind of, I think, kind of the ideal retirement job you know for a lot of people and I, I think I'll do a video about that but anyway so I guess that's it for finances oh and don't forget to leave your questions down below if you have other questions for us that you'd like us to answer either on our trips back and forth to the store this seems to be one of those times when I can corner Jim and and, captive audience. yeah he's a captive audience otherwise he, he He's not a huge fan of YouTube. He doesn't really like to be in these videos very much, as I've mentioned before, but he doesn't mind so much as we're driving back and forth to the store. He hasn't got anything else to do. 
<laughs> so anyway, all right, Will, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.